Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Uh, this is our July Q&A, and you guys popped in over 100 really amazing questions. I can't wait to get to some of them. Uh, we had questions on the graphics card market. Of course, when are GPUs going to be back in stock? When are GPUs going to be at MSRP? We'll update some of that. I also have some additional thoughts that I didn't share in my last GPU update video that I'll I'll give to you that might be helpful in terms of getting a graphics card right now. There's Windows 11 and how crazy this whole trusted platform module thing is, this TPM. How do I get TPM 2.0? We'll go through all of that. We're gonna talk about some memory speeds for Ryzen uh, 5600X and gaming builds and how much memory you actually need to game. All that coming down the pike. Of course, that's what the, we do here at this channel. It's all about getting you the best price to performance in your PC. So if that's content you want more of, remember to like the video. That really helps out, by the way, like the video. Subscribe if you wanna join us. We're up over 42,000 now, very exciting. Okay, with that, let's jump into the questions. Answering the topic that you all wanna know the most about, which is the graphics card market. Jerry, with two Y's, asks, when will GPUs return to at least close to MSRP price? Okay, so here's the chart that was from our last uh, graphics card market update video. You can see that, uh, Late June, uh, and again, don't have additional data just yet for you, but late June, if we look at the uh, RTX 3060, which I think is the bellwether along with the RX 6700 XT, we can see the prices steadily falling for the 3060 from $909 in May to $874 in early June to $742 in late June. Similarly, for the Radeon 6700 XT, we had $970, went down to $915 in early June, down to 769 in late June. But let's look at the prices right now. So these are sold listings in North America um, that don't include the TI version, basically. And they're listed by what ended most recently. Now this is a ROG Strix, three fan card. Some people are gonna pay a premium for that. Uh, that one goes for almost $800, $775 but 675 for the EVGA ones, 672 here for the Zotac all white one, uh, 680 here for the Nvidia. You can see the prices are coming down below where they were just a week or so ago. So they've probably fallen another 60 or 70 bucks. Uh, same with the 6700 XT here. We can see 739, 715, 759. If you go through and you average these prices, um, I think they, they'll probably come out to about what they were a week ago for the 6700 XT. However, what you're starting to see is you're starting to see lower price sales like, uh, like this one, these here for $695. And they're continuing to drop, $676 here. These are reference models, by the way. These are not AIB models. But this is the one that seems to be, honestly, the most on sale. I think AMD is just dropping a lot of cards right now. So we jump back into our graph now. Now seeing how prices are decreasing, I've added two more columns. I've added an MSRP column. Those are, those are MSRPs from AMD and Nvidia. Will we ever see those MSRPs again? Uh, maybe not for a while, but let's just use those for now for sake of argument. And let's then calculate based on how fast the prices are falling, what is the months to MSRP? You can see anywhere between a, a month and a half to two and a half months. Now that's, probably very aggressive in terms of assuming that the prices are gonna to continue to decrease at the same rate. I think the rate of decrease will probably slow down as we get towards MSRP. So I would probably throw a lot more uh, cushion onto these. And I think somewhere in the three to five month range for each one of them, depending on the card type itself. And of course, it's all gonna be dependent on if Intel hits the market in early fourth quarter or, or late third quarter with a ton of GPUs, these could drop instantaneously. They would have to drop instantaneously uh, or you know, within, a, within a month or so. So that's kind of a long-winded answer to your short question, but I think it is important to go through the math and kind of calculate in our brains because a lot of people are saying this, oh my gosh, it's not an MSRP right now. It's not even falling. No, it's it's definitely falling. It's just falling from the stratosphere and it takes a while when you drop something from the stratosphere in order to get back to the ground. All right, next GPU question. Uh, this is a budget GPUs. Are shortages in lower end or older GPUs gonna get less bad around the time that more recent GPUs return to MSRP? So if we assume that the current MSRP is gonna get hit by the RTX 3000 series and the RX, 6000 series sometime around you know uh, fall basically i'm still thinking it's going to be november uh, just before black friday 
what's going to go on with the budget market because AMD and Nvidia have not introduced budget GPUs into the market. We're still reliant on older generation cards. And honestly, uh, you know, the RX 5500 XT is, is gone. They're not going to produce any more of that because it's seven nanometer and it competes with the 6000 series. So really you're just looking at the older Polaris cards, the RX 570, RX 580, which they're only producing in very small numbers still. I don't know why AMD didn't ramp up production of those as the uh, graphics card crisis just really went into the depths of it. Nvidia is really the only one who's supplying this stuff. And they're, they cut off their supply of their older generation cards ahead of the RTX 3000 series launch because they didn't want to flood the market with the old cards and the new cards at the same time. Oh, geez, yeah, flood the market. Wouldn't that be too bad, right? I will say that if you want these cards right now, they are in stock. So this is Newegg. These are combo deals. Uh, I'll include links to all this stuff down in the description. I went through a couple of uh, builds with these in my last video. Uh, check that out. I'll put that up in the card for you if you want to check it out. I was able to put together a $680 build uh, with the GTX 1650 using some of these combo deals. And you can still do that. Uh, the one I recommended last time looks like it's currently out of stock uh, for $270, but there's one for $275 here, uh, GTX 1650. Again, these all come with a power supply. The power supply is slightly overpriced, but it's a very good power supply uh, in terms of not the wattage, the wattage is fine, 450 watts is fine. In terms of its uh, build quality on the Linus Tech Tips PSU Cultist list, this is a, these are tier B power supplies, which is pretty rare to find for a 450 or 550 watt power supply. So I think that's really nice. Uh, they are not modular. I would not get the Gigabyte ones because the Gigabyte power supplies are bad and they also don't come with a $20 rebate that the ASUS ones come with. They got the 1660 Super with the power supply for $405. That's a pretty good deal. The one I showed last time, currently I think it's out $394. Uh, that one's out, but you know, 10 bucks more, here you go. You can build a, a PC right now for, I will, let's not say a, a super reasonable price you know, compared to a year ago, but compared to anything of the last nine months, this is, these are very reasonable prices. So these are available right now. Finley123 asks, do you think we're gonna see more games introducing FSR on games that already have DLSS? And Elite Destroyer 0 says, will technology such as FSR make upgrading GPUs unnecessary in a sense? I think these are good questions. Uh, let, me, let me explain why. I think DLSS may be a dead technology at this point. People are like, what do you mean DLSS is dead? That's the big thing that NVIDIA is pushing. FSR is almost, is virtually free for anyone to use. Uh, it supports every graphics card, easier to implement. The quality is not as high as DLSS, so possibly there's gonna be uh, a niche in there, but it doesn't require any hardware either. And people say, well, DLSS, people are gonna gravitate towards what's best. AMD makes consoles. They make all the consoles now. <laughs> they make the Xbox and the PS5. If it's gonna be on the Xbox and the PS5, game developers are definitely gonna use FSR. Why? Because right now, the way game development works, it's no longer the, the case for a lot of games that especially big AAA titles that you just develop for one platform. There's been a lot of cross-porting in terms of titles that were primarily PC now coming over to console and titles that were primarily console coming over to PC. People who control the consoles are gonna control the PC market as well in terms of if you're gonna optimize for FSR already because you're doing console and you want that maximum frame rate out of, out of the console, well, you're gonna get it already with that. DLSS takes money to implement uh, on PC and it's not available on console. So because it's not a cross-platform technology, I don't think DLSS is gonna be around as long as we think it is. I don't think Nvidia is just gonna give up on it. I think it's gonna be here for a number of years. Okay, so Zeus777 asks, if the PC case has a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port and the motherboard does not, what do you do? He's got a Corsair 4000D airflow case and an Asus ROG Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi. What do you do right now if you end up with a case with a front panel USB type C, but your motherboard doesn't have one? Well, there's a couple things you can do. The first one is you can get an add-in card. Uh, so let me show you that. This is a card sold by Cable Eck USB 3.1. Now it's 3.1, it's not gonna be 3.2 Gen 2, but it's still gonna be, it should be 10 gigabits uh, a second in terms of speed. And you can see it right here is the connector. Let's just, uh, right there's your connector. You're gonna need a cable with this one. 
to make sure it can reach all the way to the front of the case. So just keep that in mind. And that's one potential solution. If, however, your motherboard has an extra uh, 3.0 or 3.2 slot on it, you can get an adapter for a 19 pin adapter to the 20 pin USB type C adapter for about $13. And you can plug that into the motherboard and then plug the, the cable adapter in. We always get memory questions. Here's another one uh, from Boss Bozoa, which is better for Ryzen 5600X, 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz CL, mega transfers, excuse me, CL16 or 3600 speed CL18. I get this question all the time. It's because I guess the memory kits are roughly equivalent in price and people were wondering, well, should I spend a couple more dollars and get the 3600 CL18? I personally would, but I'm not sure you're gonna see a difference here. I'm gonna do a whole dedicated content piece on how I think memory bundlers, that's G-Scale, Corsair, and others, are, they're not providing the information necessary for PC builders to make an informed decision when buying memory to get the best performance. What do I mean by that? Well, Linus Tech Tips, uh, actually hardcore overclocking, that's BuildZoid, and others have put out videos recently showing how because of the way the memory controllers work and because they've on these the 32 gigabyte kits, which are two 16 gig sticks, they're increasingly going to 16 chips per rank as opposed to eight chips per rank. That's lowering performance. I don't want to get too much in depth in it because this is a deep dive rabbit hole. I will put links to the Linus Tech Tips and BuildZoid videos below. They are build zoids has is very long but in terms of building a pc right now there is no way that you are going to be able to discern the performance difference between two kits of memory just by buying it looking at the serial number you're actually probably going to have to maybe even just throw it into your your pc and take a look at you know uh, what rank it is how many chips per rank that kind of information so i wish i had better news for you on this, but in the meantime, I would tend to go to the 3600 CL18 if it's roughly equivalent in price. That's because of the way that they bin the chips together. The things that they're gonna be able to rate at 3600 uh, CL18, probably slightly better in terms of quality than the 3200 CL16. Dominic asks, how much RAM do I need to play games like GTA 5, Borderlands 3, and Cyberpunk 2077? 16 gigs. That's Super simple answer because most games don't really use more than eight, maybe 10 gigabytes of memory at most. That being said, I usually get 32 gigs. There's a There's been some performance uh, reasons to do that in the past that have nothing to do with the actual volume, but had more to do with the getting dual rank versus single rank because most 16 gigabyte sticks are single rank. However, a lot of 16 gigabyte sticks themselves did I say that right? Eight gigabyte sticks, single rank. Uh, there, now there's a lot of 16 gigabyte sticks that are coming single rank. And it's become just a total mess within the last, I'd say, six, seven months in terms of the 16 gig chips. But just know if you're gaming right now, 16 gigabytes should do you fine. Tuan VN2007 asks, I've heard some custom PSU cables uh, are not compatible to each other because of the voltage. If that's true, then how am I able to know if this cable is compatible to each other? What a lot of people don't realize is that uh, power supplies, the device side, that means the part you plug into the motherboard, into the graphics card, those are all standard on that side. On the other side, the side that goes to the PSU, they're not standard. So if you're going to use an extension kit, what you're going to do is you're going to use the power cables that came with the PSU and you're gonna plug the extensions into those because that's where everything will be standardized at the end of that cable that came with the PSU. And you're just gonna have a little extra cable to hide basically. I did it in my last build. You can take a look at that. I'll put a link to that up in the card. You can see a little bit of what that looks like in the end. Don't ever force a PSU cable into the PSU if it's from a different one because you could blow everything up. Steve Courier asks, is it possible to replace the T, he means TPM module on brand name pre-built computers? Going from 1.2 to 2.0 would be nice to have, not to have to replace the PC for Windows 11. Have tried BIOS update, none of them have an update to 2.0. This is an issue for Windows 11 upgrade. What is TPM? Trusted Platform Module. It's simply a piece of hardware. Now, on a lot of more recent motherboards and CPUs, it's baked in. Uh, on older ones, there's actually a little chip. You can replace that chip. For a lot of folks, it's 
if it is there at all, it's probably gonna be 1.2, and <clears throat> you wanna replace that to go up to 2.0. I'm looking into this more. I can't speak to every PC that was ever made for, you know, from every company, but for the vast majority of them, they are either gonna be enabled through BIOS updates or through some kind of physical chip. There will be a sizable chunk that appear to be left out in the cold and will not be able to, at least under the current requirements for Windows 11, be allowed to update to Windows 11. What do I think about that? I think that's stupid. I don't understand it. You're not reducing security vulnerabilities. You're actually just then creating a big pool of people that are easier to aim at from my perspective because those folks are all gonna now be on Windows 10. They're not gonna upgrade to Windows 11 because they're not gonna let them upgrade to Windows 11. So to me, it's silly. I actually think they may, they've already backtracked a couple of times on this decision in small ways. I think they might go back further. So don't lose hope just yet. And listen, you don't need Windows 11. They're not gonna abandon Windows 10 anytime in the next four or five plus years. There's still machines running Windows 95, for God's sake. And I would not sell my whole PC for the sole reason of upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Like, what's, what's, the, what's the difference? And finally, and probably most importantly, uh, I love Made Noel. Uh, is that an anime thing? I'm not. Somebody asked me in the questions if I watched a lot of anime, and I, I don't. I used to watch old anime like uh, Robotech and things like that when I was a kid, which were really cool shows. Why is RGB so important besides the aesthetics? Why is a non-RGB build impossible to build today? Well, first of all, it's not impossible. You, you can actually do it pretty easily. But the reason you want RGB in your build, especially if you're a gamer, is really simple. RGB increases FPS. It's just science, okay? No, not really, of course. You can always turn the RGB off. Most motherboards now come with RGB. You can disable it. Uh, you don't have to buy RGB memory. You don't have to buy an RGB cooler. You don't have to buy RGB fans. You can still get stuff without RGB in it. I just happen to think, as somebody who was like so adamantly opposed to RGB maybe five or six years ago, I started building some things with RGB and I kind of caught the RGB bug. But I gotta tell you, it's fun. It's just fun. All right, that's gonna do it for our Q&A for July. Thank you so much to everybody who asked questions. If I didn't get to your question, I'm still gonna go through in the comments and I'll I'll try and give you a response. I always try and respond to all the comments on my channel if I can. The channel's growing like crazy. Subscribe if you wanna join us. And hey, with that, I will catch you on the next one.